In the mind of the public, the infamous Ravenite Social Club is synonymous with the swaggering John Gotti. The late Gambino crime boss was often seen on newsreels and surveillance footage holding court outside the bricked-up storefront. But which mobster actually owned the famous historical Mafia hangout? Let's take a look. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at the Gambino mobster who actually owned the famous Ravenite Social Club in Manhattan's Little Italy. At some point in his career as crime boss, Carlo Gambino felt that the venue was becoming too much of a hotspot for police surveillance and he stopped frequenting the establishment. The club then became the base of operations for Gambino family underboss Anilio Della Croce. After Mr Neil had died, it was then taken on by his protege, John Gotti, who made it famous in the public eye. However, neither Gambino, Della Croce or Gotti actually owned the club, either officially or unofficially. That honour belonged to below the radar Gambino mobster, Joseph Joe the Cat Laforte. Laforte was a huge earner for the Gambino crime family. Laforte made an absolute fortune in real estate. Laforte didn't just own the Ravenite, he owned the entire building, apartments and all. According to one Little Italy source, Laforte was a low-key, low-level soldier who made a lot of money and didn't piss it away. He bought property in Soho and Little Italy when you could get it for a song and he lived off it for the rest of his life. Born in around 1917, Joseph Laforte, like most mobsters, began his criminal career young. He earned his nickname Joe the Cat from the way he leapt across building rooftops when evading the police. Despite not appearing in the incomplete Gambino chart at the Joe Valacci hearings, the FBI have Laforte down as a made man in around 1963. However, the date of his actual induction is unknown. Throughout Laforte's long and profitable criminal career, he only served a small amount of time in prison. He had state convictions for gambling and obstruction of justice, but virtually served no time at all. And he also served two short federal sentences for tax evasion and perjury. Laforte managed to avoid any large racketeering investigations that plagued many of his mobster contemporaries. One law enforcement official said, He was a tight, cheap old bastard who everyone hated but they all loved the money that he brought in, so he rarely had a problem with his bosses, and never one he couldn't solve. Joe the Cat was also very good friends with Anilio Della Croce, whose crew he was part of before Della Croce was made underboss by Carlo Gambino in around 1965. Laforte and Della Croce were known to holiday together, and before Della Croce moved to a home on Staten Island, Laforte was actually his landlord as he owned the building that Della Croce lived in on Mulberry Street. Two of Laforte's sons, Jimmy and Joseph Jr., were also involved in a life of crime. Joseph Laforte Jr., also known as Buddy, was a made man who served in the same crew as his father under Gambino captain Michael Mike the Baker Caesar. Mike the Baker, now running the crew that once belonged to Neil Della Croce and before him Armand Raver. Joe the Cat loved his sons but Buddy made a near fatal error in the early 80s. Captain Mike Caesar was planning to step down and Buddy paid him $20,000 to be named as his acting captain, essentially jumping over his father. Both Della Croce and Laforte Sr. were fuming. The angry Della Croce went to family boss Paul Castellano complaining that Mike Caesar had broken mob protocol by not consulting him when naming an acting captain. In a rare move, Mike the Baker Caesa was banished from the Gambino family. Buddy was knocked back down to soldier and placed under the crew of Jimmy Brown Filer, although essentially he was shelled from the family. Laforte Sr. was then allegedly named as Mike the Baker's replacement. Later, in an FBI recording at Della Croce's Staten Island home with John Gotti and Angelo Ruggiero present, Laforte recalled his anger at Buddy's behaviour, stating that he wanted to smash his son's face in. The bat was right there. I don't know how I didn't grab the bat. 
but it was in the back of my mind that he's a Mika Nostra or I would have taken all his teeth out of his mouth. Della Croce, a father himself, seemed amused. If you hit him with a fucking bat, he'd get hurt. He's your son. Joe the cat responded to his old friend. Boy, if I hit with that bat, he's hurt. Because I'd knock all his front teeth out. I mean, I'd smash his nose. I'd really hit. Because I was mad that day. My son Jimmy stole some money off me. I knocked all his teeth out. I broke his nose, smashed his whole face with a bat. This guy, he does ten times worse. I wasn't willing to stop with him at all. In 1985, Laforte's close friend, Neil Della Croce, died of cancer. And family boss, Paul Castellano, had Laforte placed under Thomas Bellotti. This infuriated John Gotti, who believed that everything that had once been Neil's should now be his. He was recorded stating that if Laforte was under him, he'd now be giving him two million dollars. A sum of money that he now figured he was missing out on. After Paul Castellano was whacked, new boss John Gotti was more than happy to accept the large amounts of money that Laforte kicked up to him. But it appears that Gotti wasn't a fan of Joe the Cat as a person. In one FBI recording, he is heard calling Laforte a heartless motherfucker on at least a dozen occasions. After Gotti's 1992 conviction, the Fed started to make moves to seize the building at 247 Mulberry Street, the property that housed the Raven Knight. Laforte initially thought about contesting this, but decided to let it go, keep his head down and focus on his gambling empire on Staten Island. In 1997, Deputy US Marshals finally evicted all residents from the building, and then a year later the property was sold for around $1 million to developer Eric Hader. Laforte owned many properties on Staten Island, and in his remaining years he could be found in New Dorp, where a driver would take him almost every day to New Dorp Plaza, where he owned many stores. Joseph Joe the Cat Laforte died in his sleep on the 23rd of August 2016 at his home on Staten Island. He was 99 years of age. Thanks for watching.